The Midnight Mage build is going to be an intelligence build that specializes in night sorceries. You're going to be using two staves of loss, so this is a new game plus build, and I want you to know that everything that I'm capturing in this video is new game plus eight, but I will have all of the stats broke down for level 50, 100, and 150 if you would like to play this at meta level at new game plus two or three. I was going through all my videos and I realized that I had not really done any intelligence builds or sorcerer builds, so this is one of those. Now let's get into it. Now in this build, it is incredibly powerful powerful. There is a very cheesy way to play this build, which means you can really just jog yourself through the game, have no problems at all, stand back and cast, and make every single enemy and boss a complete boar fest because of how much damage you're going to do. And that is hiding behind your great shield summons and casting Night Common. It is by far one of the most powerful combinations that I have found in Elden Ring, and it is also one of the most ridiculously easy ways to play. There is also a secondary way to play this build, which is you use the Moon Veil when they get a little bit too close. And I know there's going to be a lot of Moon Veil hate, but I use it very rarely in this build. It is only for last ditch efforts when you can't get a cast off and the enemy is too aggressive. It's really nice to be able to pull that weapon out, hit the enemy with the immense magic damage that it does, and then put it away and start casting again. So there are seven knight sorceries, and we are going to be using a combination of three of them. You can use all of them in this build if you would want to, but I didn't see a reason to do that. And the ones that we have chosen, I think, are the best out of the seven. So we're going to be using Ambush shard, night shard, and night comet. Night shard is just for those quick casts out if you need to get a little bit of damage out and kind of spam a spell. Ambush shard is one that hits them in the back, and it is almost unblockable unless they're moving around a lot, and then it has been known to miss. But night comet is your bread and butter here, which is your big chargeable spell, and that's going to allow you to do a lot of damage to almost every single enemy in this game. So getting into the weapons of this build, we're going to be using two staves of loss because this is a new game plus build. The reason we're going to be doing this is because it's going to boost our night sorceries by 60%, which is absolutely incredible and is the highest boost of damage you're going to get from any sorceries in the game. It's going to have a sorcery scaling of 334 at plus 24, and for the attribute scaling, it's going to scale with strength, dex, and intelligence, but obviously the intelligence is going to be way higher. Strength and dex are down at D, and intelligence is at S. You do not need a lot of stats in order to wield this weapon. It only requires 6 strength, 12 dexterity, and 14 intellect, and is a really great staff, especially for this build. You can get this incredibly early early in the game if you just go over to Kaled into the Celia Town of Sorcery, and it's right there sitting on one of the balconies after you navigate through all of the gnarled branches. Now for our secondary weapon, the Moon Veil, you can find this very early in Gale Tunnel right inside of Kaled, and it's going to scale with Intellect and Dexterity, both with B scalings. Now obviously we're not using this weapon a ton, but the main reason is because of its Ash of War Transient Moonlight. This is going to allow us to shoot magic damage vertically or horizontally depending on your heavier light attack, and it's going to do a lot of damage, and it's a very quick cast. Obviously, it has the moveset of a katana, so if you do need to attack rapidly, you are able to do that. But the real reason we have this weapon as a backup is just in case there are some aggressive enemies, which in Elden Ring there are. Now, if you want to wield this weapon, you need 12 strength, 18 dexterity, and 23 intellect, which in New Game Plus, this is not hard to do at all. And if you're in your first playthrough and want to use this weapon, you also should be able to use this at a reasonable time in the game. Now, as far as our armor goes, I think this is one of the coolest looking sorcerer armor sets in the game, and I can't take credit for it. This was actually submitted to me by somebody who was in my Elden Bling series here on YouTube, so if you haven't checked that series out, definitely go check it out on my channel. It's an entire playlist. I'll link that for you down below. And within this sorcery set, we're going to be using the Great Hood, the Battle Mage Robe, Lusat's Manchettes, and the Bull Goat Greaves for a little bit of extra poise. The Great Hood can be found from completing the painting at Castle Soul, and you need to go right here on the map in order to obtain it. The entire Battle Mage set is going to be an Altus Plateau right here on the map. All you have to do is kill a Battle Mage and he'll drop everything for you. Lusat's entire set is also going to be located after doing the entirety of Sorcerer Selen's questline, and you're going to find it in Cilia Hideaway, where Lusat used to be. And as far as the Bull Goat Greaves go, you're going to get them at the very end of Patch's questline, so you're going to find him in Murkwater Cave, go through his entire questline throughout the game, and at the very, very end, he will give those to you. And guys, real quick, per usual, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this far into the video. If you have not subscribed yet, feel free to hit that sub button and the bell notification. It helps me out a ton. I feel like we're going to get 20,000 subscribers in the year of 2023. So if you're enjoying the content and want to be part of that, that goal, hit that sub button. I would appreciate it a ton. And now let's get into the talismans. Now, as far as how we get this build to work and the talismans we are using, we are going to be using a great grouping of talismans that are going to stack your magic damage and allow you to have a really fun and easy time through this game. We're going to be using the Graven School Talisman, which is going to raise our potency of our sorceries by 4%. So that's an extra 4% damage. We're also going to be using the Graven Mass Talisman, which is going to greatly raise the potency of our sorceries, giving us an 8% damage boost to 
our sorceries, and this will stack with the Graven School Talisman, giving us a total of 12% increase in our sorceries damage, but we're also going to be using the Magic Scorpion Charm, which is going to raise our magic attack, but it's going to lower our damage negation, so this is going to give us 12% extra magic damage, but we are going to take 10% increased damage, so watch out for that. And finally, we are using the Godfrey Icon, which is going to enhance our charge skills and spells by 15% damage. All of these talismans are going to stack, giving us a 39% increase to the damage of our spells that we are using. If you are feeling like the Elden Lord himself, then you can replace the Graven School Talisman with the Ritual Sword Talisman if you plan on not getting hit, but these are the talismans that I have and I feel like they synergize very well. The Godfrey Icon is going to be located right as you get into Altus Plateau in the Golden Lineage Everjail. The Magic Scorpion Charm is going to be located after the very end of Selvis's quest, and I'll leave that down below for you guys in the description, so if you need to use that video to get that talisman, I'll have it down there for you. The Graven School Talisman is going to be located in a secret room within the Raya Lucaria Academy. Right after you pick up Comet, head over the railing and jump through a hole where there's a bunch of living jars, and there's going to be a massive pile of crystals. This will be located right on that. And the Graven Mass Talisman is going to be located atop Albanaric Rise right here in the Consecrated Snowfield. And I know we went over some of the sorceries early on in the video, but there are some honorable mentions here. Obviously, you're going to want to be using Terra Magica in boss fights because this is going to boost your sorcery damage by 35% when you are standing inside of the rune on the ground. This is also going to stack with all of our talismans, allowing us to just do so much magical damage. You definitely want to be using this one. The other two spells I'm using are Ronnie's Dark Moon and the Stars of Ruin. These are just personal preference for me. You don't have to use them, but they are really fun to use nonetheless. But that's the spells that we're going to be using on top of our night sorceries. And lastly, for our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we're going to be using the Cerulean Hidden Tier, which is going to eliminate all FP consumption and the Magic Shrouding Crack Tier, which is going to give us a 20% damage boost to our magic attacks, which guess what? That is going to stack with all of our talismans, giving us an incredible amount of magic damage for this build. If you want the Cerulean Hidden Tier, you're going to have to go fight an Ulcerated Tree Spirit at the Minor Erd Tree near the Road of Iniquity at Mount Gelmir. And if you're looking for the Magic Shrouding Crack Tier, it's going to be at the Erd Tree Avatar near the Minor Erd Tree in the northeast of Lyurnia of the Lakes. And guys, that's going to be it for the Midnight Mage build. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know anything that you would change down below. Let me know how you can get more damage out of this build, things you like, you didn't like, anything along those lines. I love hearing because I love talking to you guys. It's a lot of fun and I appreciate you all. So if you have not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you guys can know when I'm making more videos. I have videos coming out Mondays and Fridays with shorts in between. And then also we are about to move into Lies of P and Lords of the Fallen. So stay tuned for that. But per usual, thank you guys so much. Until next time, stay safe, enjoy the game, and I'll see you in the next one.